Hi, my name is Michael Chang, and on behalf of my collaborators, I will present our work on hierarchical abstraction for combinatorial generalization and object rearrangement. We present our method called neural constraint satisfaction for solving simulated goal specified object rearrangement tasks from raw pixels as input. Given an initial image observation and a goal image observation, our method produces a series of pick and place actions for rearranging the set of objects depicted in the initial image to specify the location constraints specified by the goal image. The general problem we tackle is the problem of building agents that automatically model and manipulate systems. Traditionally, humans use computers to model systems of objects by abstracting the scene into variables, in this case as representations of objects, and write code for the domain-specific language and transformations that process these variables. In contrast, automatically modeling systems requires that the agent construct its own variables, learns transformations on these variables, and ground these variables and its observations without supervision. Instead of humans manually specifying the goal constraints to satisfy, automatically manipulating systems requires the agents to infer these constraints directly from raw observation and translate its internal interventions into external actions in the world. Automatically modeling and manipulating systems requires overcoming two challenges, which I call the correspondence problem and the combinatorial problem. The correspondence problem is the problem of constructing representations of entities such that there is a correspondence between transforming the agent's internal representation of an object and acting on the object in the real world. This is challenging because this requires inferring such representations from the sensory motor interface without supervision on what the entity representations should correspond to. In this example, we want entity one, the agent's representation at index one, to correspond to one of the red cups such that moving the red cup in the environment corresponds to applying a transformation to entity one while leaving the other entity representations unchanged. The combinatorial problem is the problem of efficiently compressing the combinatorially large space of object configurations to represent transformations in a way that can be reused in different contexts. Here, you see the same state transition for a single object, but shown in different contexts, whether the background objects are in different configurations or the target object itself is different. Monolithically representing such scenes as prior methods do would not expose the appropriate problem structure that enables us to design algorithms that disentangle transformations from the entities they will operate on. Our method called neural constraint satisfaction is our proposal for overcoming both challenges to build agents that automatically model and manipulate systems. It has two components, one for modeling and one for planning and control. Let's discuss the modeling component first. At the core, our goal is to represent reusable transformations over entity representations. Concretely, we want to abstract this visual transition into a state transition that is independent with respect to the specific entity and the context. If we can do that, then we will be able to reuse our representation of the state transition on different entities and different contexts. In order to throw away about information about the specific entity and the context, we will construct a two-level hierarchy. The first level maps each image in the visual transition into a set of slots. We are going to enforce that each slot is split into two parts. One part we will call the state, the state, which is the part that is affected by action. The other part we will call the type, which is the part that is not. Then for the second level, for any inferred entity transition, we can extract the transition between its state and cache the state transition in a separate external memory that we can retrieve and reuse for later problems. The way we do this is the following. In the first level, we train a slot-based world model such that for each entity index, we apply the dynamics model only on the state part and just directly copy the type over to the next time step. In the second level of the hierarchy, we cluster over entities that share the same state to construct an abstract transition graph, where nodes correspond to states and edges correspond to transitions between states. These edges are thus our independent representations of entity transformations that are agnostic to type and context. This graph thus caches the abstract state transitions that we will retrieve and reuse. Let us now discuss the control component of our method. We first are given an initial observation and a goal. We use the world model to infer entity representations as goal constraints from the goal observation and the current entities from the current observation. 
the indices of these entities are not aligned, so we use the Hungarian algorithm to align the indices of the entity representations from the current observation with those of the goal observation. We select an entity to affect, bind the entity at this index to a node in the graph, and this is the attention mask for the selected entity. This is the attention mask for the abstract node in the graph. We do the same thing for the goal constraint. Bind it. We, bu we bind the goal constraint at this index to a node in the graph. This is the attention mask for the selected constraint. This is the attention mask for the abstract node in the graph. And the edge between the two nodes is tagged with the action that causes the transition between one node to another. We take that action in the environment observe the resulting observation, and now we see a new observation and repeat the process. Notice that these edges, whose nodes we bind to are agnostic to the entity type and context entities, so each edge can be reused for other scenarios too. We do this for every single entity, and then we are done. Because the state trans transformations we learn are agnostic to entity type and context, we can train only four objects and generalize to five objects, generalize to six objects, generalize to seven objects, and generalize to eight objects. But our method also mis makes mistakes. Here we see that it failed to move the yellow ball. Here it failed to move the green hammer. Here it made multiple mistakes. And here it swapped the position of the red and purple cubes. Our method outperforms various offline RL and model-based RL baselines, including MPC planning with the slot-based dynamics model. This result is consistent with two other environments involving block rearrangement and block stacking. To conclude, our goal is to build towards an agent that can automatically model and manipulate systems. A solution to this problem needs to solve the correspondence problem of representing entities internally in a way that corresponds to objects in the external environment, as well as the combinatorial problem of representing transformations on these entities in a way that can be reused across different contexts. Our key idea is to explicitly factorize each entity representation into its type and state, and cache previously encountered transformations as only a function of the state. This enables us to develop a planning and control algorithm that retrieves previously encountered transformations for solving novel rearrangement problems, enabling us to generalize to novel object configurations and novel numbers of objects significantly better than state-of-the-art offline and model-based reinforcement learning methods.